Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today I prepare a crowd favorite, my gyro meatloaf, and we visit Noble Creature Cask House. Great beer and vibe. But first, a visit with brothers John and Logan at Nova Coffee Company. Nova Coffee Company is right here on the square in downtown Warren, and it's owned by brothers John and Logan. And you're the kitchen end of the deal. I am, yes. And Logan is the coffee connoisseur. And you had a really cute, so what was your slogan for what you guys do? So what I say is if you think it, if you drink it, Logan thinks it. If you chew it, I do it. So, okay, yeah, so, so something like that. Now, a year ago, you were what in the insurance business? Yeah, yeah, about a year ago, I was selling insurance and uh, we decided let's do something different. <laughs> and I mean, this really is a great concept. Thank you. And where did your cooking background come from? Just home, self taught. Uh, we, we had went away and had some donuts on a family trip and came back and I said, man, I think I can do those. So I did them on my stove and a fryer that was a one by one fryer and uh, we ended up liking them, so. Wow, yeah. so now you only do the cake donuts. We do, for, for now, yeah, for now. Hopefully we can expand And them. you yeah. made, did you like look at a bunch of different recipes? I mean, how did you hone it to what, yeah, yeah, what a, you wanted? A lot of trial and error. I mean, this whole section of me is from the, <laughs> the taste the testing. Yeah, <laughs> taste testing and like trying out different things. So yeah, we, we, just, we just really got a, a, a recipe that we liked and went with it. So really. like the base of your donuts always are the same. They are. And the flavoring comes with your toppings. Yes, um, we, do, we do usually have six flavors of donuts. Uh, one donut usually is something different. So we'll do a chocolate or a red velvet or a blueberry or something like that. But for the most part, we have a sour cream based donut. Oh, it is sour, sour cream, cream based. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And you don't mix it with anything, fruit or do any of that. No, nonsense. no, we do. Every once in a while, we'll get crazy. I've put jalapenos in it before. We do savory donuts and, and we'll do some, some different things like that. Put bacon in it. Well, I um, know because yeah. that one customer, yeah, the girl, was a little bummed that she, the bacon donut now wasn't feel, here. Now I feel bad. So you're only open really for breakfast and lunch. Yeah, yeah. So we, we run a brunch is uh, is our big um, kind of our, our big food is, is the brunch. Uh, we have Beaudrillon burritos. Um, so you basically it, it starts out with cheese, egg, and tortilla, and then you add proteins and, and veggies or whatever you want. And then we we love our, our open faced toasts. Um, so we Those every month we switch delicious. them up. And uh, you had the avocado toast. I did, and it was yeah. excellent. Good, and what kind of bread do you like to use? Is it from a local baker? It, it, well, it's from Youngstown. Um, Salones is, is the uh, the baker company yes. that we use uh, they, yeah. they they cook everything and bring it drop it off to us so our bread's pretty fresh it's, it's usually cooked that morning and then brought to us so now if you drink it logan thinks it that is our new clever tag and line. if you chew it john does it <laughs> <laughs> oh. now the pour over you explained to me earlier yes is really better for a darker richer blend right yeah, I would say uh, it's all about texture. You do a pour over, then you're gonna keep some of that texture. But this here is a siphon, and if you do the siphon, the siphon's gonna give you probably some more of those smooth, fruitier flavors that you're gonna get out of maybe an Ethiopian coffee. Um, so we're gonna put this on here. So this is like a science experiment. So this heats up, then this bubbles up, right? And it goes yeah. into this vessel. So the pressure in the bottom basin, because the heat's there, it's becoming so hot that that pressure is building in there and the water has nowhere to go except to go up through this little glass tube. And you actually see it rising in there right now. And how do you quality. source your beans? Like where do you find ones that you are up to your high standards? It all comes to the tasting. So there's different, there's different roasters all over the place. There's local roasters yes. um, that we've had before, like Brand Street Coffee Roasters mm -hmm. and Boardman. Um, we use their espresso beans because they do a fantastic job. Uh, and then the other coffee roasters that we've chosen, like this one's from uh, Santa Cruz, California. It's Verve. from a roastery called Verve. And, and this is a lighter, fruitier blend. Yeah, actually the notes are right there. So this is a Colombian Rio Blanco. So this is ready to go. We have all of our water that just went from the bottom basin up to the top because the pressure is so great in the bottom that it okay. rises up. So go ahead, you can dump that in. 
Just, just dump it right just in. Just dump it all in. Okay. Don't want to waste it. Oh, it all came out. Okay. And I'll give you this, and so we're going to stir that for 45 seconds. Okay. And where did you become such a coffee connoisseur? Well, <laughs> I lived in Australia for a couple of years, and I learned how to do coffee there, and the coffee culture there is... A little, bit, a little bit more intricate than it is here in uh, Warren, Ohio. But I uh, learned a lot of coffee, then I moved back. And that's when I learned how to do the siphons, the pour overs, and uh, a little bit more intricate style coffee. Uh, you want to do a little, you want to add a little bit of air to the coffee. Okay, and what does that do to it? It's just like wine. Also, a big important <laughs> thing is it looks cool. Coffee only tastes cool, good if it looks cool, so. Okay, <laughs> all right. Wow, very good. So you're gonna smell some of those notes in there, the key lime, the shortbread, and then the taste is where you're gonna get that buttery taste from, that texture. Wow, it really does finish buttery. Yeah. It really, I'd walk a mile for a good donut. Yeah, and right? And a good cup of coffee. <laughs> walk the mile, I mean it. This place is really, you've done a great job. Thank you, thank you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Looking for local craft beers? They're right here at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. How many beers do you have available, Rude the Dude? Well, Casey, we got 41 craft beers on tap, local breweries, Ohio breweries. We have about 40 to 50 different cans and bottles in our coolers with the same local Ohio breweries. And Youngstown Beer Week, first time ever, kicks off right here yes. at the Magic Tree. April 22nd, Monday, is the uh, start of Youngstown Beer Week. We have our launch party here with our Brewers Roast. That's going to lead into the whole week, right into the Big Tap and Six Craft Beer Festival at the Metroplex. Uh, there's over 80 breweries. Uh, eight local food vendors, live entertainment. It's gonna be a great event for craft beer in the area. And it benefits making kids count. Your search is over. The largest beer selection is right here at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for 30 years. And my message has never changed. If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative. Dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may encounter. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court. And remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. Mayflower Wilhelm is your full-service, independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Wilhelm. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Wilhelm, close by with three locations to serve you. Your home, your way. The choices are endless at Stonebridge Neighborhoods. Choose the lot and floor plan at Stonebridge or Westbury Park. Spacious single-family homes built to your specifications. Or enjoy a villa at Saybrook Point with extensive options for maintenance-free living. See for yourself. Stonebridge Neighborhoods will be your next move. Grand opening March 30th and 31st. For more information, contact Howard Hanna today. Woolley Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Woolley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. One of my favorite festival foods is the gyro. Yes, for years I mispronounced it. It is actually the Yiddo. But how do you reproduce that at home? 
Well, I have got a recipe that you are going to love. It is my Yiddo meatloaf. It's made with ground lamb and ground beef, Middle Eastern spices. It is a large quantity, so it will serve many people, and you are going to be thrilled with the taste and the outcome. So let's get started with my Yiddo meatloaf. For this recipe, you'll need one pound of ground chuck, two pounds of ground lamb, two shallots finely chopped, one half cup medium bulgur wheat softened, two tablespoons of tar, one tablespoon kosher salt, one teaspoon ground pepper, one teaspoon garlic powder, two tablespoons dry parsley, three eggs, and olive oil. This meatloaf assembles pretty quickly. I've preheated the oven to 375 and I've softened the bulgur wheat. The bulgur wheat is what is used in tabbouleh, a very popular Middle Eastern dish, and I usually get my Middle Eastern spices at Gassane's. They have a very wide uh, selection. This is a medium bulgur, and it's quite coarse right now, but all you have to do is add it to warm tap water, and you'll see that it expands. It only takes a few minutes. And before we begin, we'll just mix together all of these ingredients. The chopped shallots, we'll put that in a smaller bowl. And then we'll also add the za'atar. Now I make my own za'atar, which is a combination of sesame seeds and sumac, which is a lemony, deep, deep purple spice, and thyme. I like the fresh thyme rather than the dried thyme. But you can usually buy the za'atar already assembled also at Gassane's. So we'll add this, it's two heaping tablespoons, to the shallots. We'll add the salt. Try to use kosher because it does blend better. The ground pepper, the garlic powder, and the dried parsley. And now all we'll do is just mix this together. All right, so now things are going to get a bit messy. I better remove my wedding band. All right, so we'll add the mixture with the shallots and all the herbs and spices. We will add our eggs, three eggs. And now we will add the bulgur wheat. And this is very easily drained. All you do is give it a good hard squeeze with your hand to extract the water and then you just add that to the bowl because you really want to make sure you squeeze out all the moisture and now we'll give this a really good mix and the best way to do it is just get in there with your hands and thoroughly blend this together I prepared the loaf pan by spreading some oil all around the surfaces and you want to make sure you pack it in. So now what I'm going to do is just make a little well right down the middle. It's all packed in and I'll take the olive oil and just pour it right down the middle and then rub it all over the top to prepare it before we put it in the oven. Our oven is preheated to 375 and we'll put that in for almost an hour, about 60 minutes. And what would an authentic Yiddo be without the tzatziki sauce? So while the meatloaf's baking, let's put this together. For the tzatziki sauce, you'll need one cup of plain Greek yogurt, juice from one lemon, three cloves of garlic chopped, one English cucumber, seeds removed, one tablespoon of fresh mint and or dill chopped, and kosher salt and fresh ground pepper to taste. Nobody likes soupy tzatziki. So after I peel, and to seed the cucumbers, I wrap them up in paper towels to absorb the moisture. And see, it's only been about five or 10 minutes. And look at the moisture that has already been absorbed. So now they're much drier and it'll make for a chunkier sauce. So we'll remove that and I'll just chop these up lightly. Now we'll add the chopped garlic, the lemon juice, and a couple tablespoons of fresh chopped dill. You can also use mint, I really like both of them, or you can add both dill and mint to this sauce. 
but I thought the dill looked really nice today at the store. So I picked that up. Oh, I just love the smell of dill. And now a couple grounds, grinds rather, of fresh ground pepper. We'll add salt later because we don't want to draw any more moisture out of the cucumbers. Now we'll just put this on and give it a good chop. Now how easy was that? We'll just add this to the Greek yogurt. Well, as you can see, this is one beautiful meatloaf, and it tastes just like a yiddo. And you can serve it formal at the table by the slice, or you can load up a pita like I am about to do and just put the trimmings on it. Tomatoes, I'm gonna put some cucumber, and of course top it with a little of my homemade tzatziki sauce. And right here at home, I am going to enjoy a yiddo. And it isn't even festival season yet. Oh, I cannot wait to bite into this. This is gonna be a little messy. So let's see how it tastes. Mm. It is so good. You are going to love this. I'm telling you, this makes enough for six, eight, ten people. You can slice it as thin as you want or as thick as you want. Mm. And I think a Yiddo calls for a nice IPA mm. to wash down all those wonderful flavors delicious. Just go to my website, CaseyMaloneShow.com for the tzatziki and for the Yiddo meatloaf recipe. You are going to thank me later. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. At the Vein Center and Med Spa, we realize the serious health issue varicose veins can cause. We know it's more than just cosmetic. That's why we provide you with caring and personal service in a clean and friendly atmosphere. All vein procedures are done in our office during convenient and flexible hours by a medical doctor with over 20 years experience. The Vein Center and Med Spa also offers fillers and neurotoxin procedures, hydrofacials, and laser hair removal services. And now we're proud to welcome Dr. Kiesel to our practice. Call the Vein Center and Med Spa for a free consultation and see why our patients leave satisfied. It's back April 27th, the Big Tap in Real Craft Beer Festival at the Metroplex. Sample craft beers and ciders from over 80 breweries, local food, art, and entertainment. Proceeds benefit Project MKC. Tickets on sale now at BigTapIn.com. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the bump card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. There's a new standard in assisted living, one that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services. And a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. 
Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Selling engagement rings never gets old. It's love. It's a huge on-taking because they're gonna wear that ring probably forever, but if they're not gonna wear it forever, they're gonna pass it down to somebody. Our rings will hold a lifetime, and we wanna make sure it does. We stand by every single thing that we sell. I believe I can find the perfect ring. I really try to get them exactly what she would want. And to just be a little part of that is really, it warms your heart inside. Get real, get Kamara. Well, did you know that right now, the only craft brewery in the city of Youngstown is Noble Creature, and it's owned by Marcy and Ira, and I absolutely love your establishment. Thanks, thanks. And it's been over a year now. You're growing pains and uh, getting everything up and running. Mm -hmm. And are you happy with the progress you've made so far? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's always a work in progress. We got a, a lot more work to do, but yeah, we you know we've only officially been open for about almost four months now, and then but it was you know a year before that actually doing all the construction and the build out and everything. But still got a lot to do, but uh, yeah, it's going going great so far. And this is a historic building. You were telling me uh, this what? No, please rattle off your fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was the Butler Memorial Presbyterian Church and it was built in 1923, and it was the first um, African-American Presbyterian church between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Well, tell me about Noble Creature. You know, you had, where, where did the name come from? I think it's a very noble name. I think it, it really sounds, it sounds like a, a beer name. Yeah. I like it. Um, it was kind of a mix. So our logo is a cat skull, and we had a Yes. We had a, a, a black and white skull. a black and white cat when we first moved to Youngstown when I was in college. And she was her name was Nurgle and she was a really awesome cat, so it was sort of a little bit of a tribute. Tribute to Nurgle. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had two pit bulls that we had adopted and we would tell them all the time what noble creatures they are. <laughs> um, so it's just like our pets are always a big part of our lives. Yeah. So. And all your pets are ner noble? Noble, yes. Uh, for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, they can't really be evil, yeah. right? I mean, it's a little dog yeah. or yeah, a cat. Yeah, I mean, where does one go to get these skills? Well, to become a brewer. Well, I started, uh, I got into craft beer. Uh, you know, it was the first time I had a craft beer. It was like all my gang rare Voss, and I, you know, I was drinking old German in college, and it's just like, oh man. Yeah, was that, and where, what was your <laughs> aha moment? What kind of beer was uh, it? Oh my gang rare Voss, and it was, you know, Belgian double, uh, kind of like a dark uh, Belgian style. And I was like, I had no idea if that's what beer could taste like. So, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I kind of get interested in, in that at that point and then uh, started home brewing and then one of my teachers at uh, Edinburgh went to school was a home brewer too so he kind of like showed me the ropes and you know gave me a bunch of literature and then it basically was just reading a lot and uh, you know just kind of testing out recipes and just learning as as I went. So you always made this so then you started making it at home? Yeah I started, started home brewing and then I worked at a brewery for in PA for four years and uh, learned a lot there for sure and then Basically, we were looking for a place in Youngstown. So we moved here about like eight years ago after college and then bought our house about five years ago. So we've been looking for a place for a while. I think <laughs> your beers are very good. Thanks. And I, I don't think, like I've been to a lot of, um, you know, the different breweries nearby. And maybe one or two sour off, mm -hmm. you know, offerings. Mm -hmm. But you have always at least three, four, five. Mm -hmm. You obviously, I love the sour. All right, good. And <laughs> where, where did that trend come from? Like, where, where does the sour trend? Because it's that's basically been only in the last three, four years. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an old, old style of uh, beer, especially like lambic producers, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's been around for a long time. But I think there's a lot of American breweries that are, you know, kind of bringing the sour back. What country from the lambic? Is that German? That's Belgian. So Belgian. yeah, Belgian lambic brewers, and they would. Uh, you know, that's, that's been around for a really long time, and I think there's kind of like a renaissance in the States now where, you know, pe breweries are actually learning, you know, all the different microbes that go into making those beers and learning how to work with them back, you know, 10, 15 years ago. There wasn't a whole lot of 
information about that, but you know, there's a lot of, a lot so of people leading the way. So the fruit in that is required. Is that really what um, helps with the sour? How, how do no, you, it's you not, know? Yeah, fruit's not necessarily required in, you know, like a sour beer, especially like a lambic beer, but uh, um, it, it definitely, you know, accents some of the acidity from the beer and kind of like the, the funkiness, depending on what you're doing. Well, and then now the kitchen will be opening very soon mm -hmm. and you will be the chef extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes and it, it, that'll really add though don't you think yeah to, for your customers yeah definitely um and then also once the kitchen's open our hours will expand too so we'll ha be open earlier and then more days and what will your offerings be out, out of the kitchen we're gonna do a lot of spent grain breads and homemade bagels so we'll have some sandwiches um appetizers i want to do some meat and cheese pairings that go with each side of the board so we'll have some pairings for clean beers and some pairings for the sour funky beers so sort of. so is this what you thought it would be i uh. mean you know owning this business <laughs> how has it been i mean that had to be so <laughs> scary when you first yeah. really undertook yeah. it i had honestly i had no idea you know yeah. it's definitely a lot of paperwork and a lot of just doing stuff on the business side of things and honestly i feel like i'm kind of slacking on at the moment because we're trying to get everything else up and running and uh you know keep you know trying to get to you know just making beer and kegging beer and I think we didn't think that out the construction part would ever actually end yeah. so then when we finally <laughs> opened it was like we didn't have any idea what it would You're be like, like. Oh, wow here we yeah. are open yeah. so you were I mean over a year I mean yeah. you've been, been putting this together yeah for sure I mean I think it's great I really do oh, I, I think you did a beautiful job The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.